The government needs to make sure that they're funding primary education properly and also um, rid baseline assessments so that children are able to learn through play, not through testing. The government should commit to real terms, inflation linked funding of education and not just paying lip service to it. We need re real investment in education for the future of the country. The government should stop attacking teachers, the government should fund education to proper and sustainable levels and they should invest in the future of all our young children. The government should be investing in education into the for the future of our young people, um, they should be investing in one-to-one -one support, a curriculum that teachers can actually teach and um, aimed at the pupils that we're teaching. <laughs> The government first should listen to the grassroots teachers, not senior management who think they know best for everyone. People on the front line like myself who have a full timetable who deal with over 600 700 pupils per year. We can't do individual lesson plans for every single student. We do it as a group. We know our groups better than SMT, SLT and the government. You need to begin to trust teachers that do the job that they are employed to do. Hire professional teachers as a first. Support these professional teachers. Help them with their mental health problems. Let them do what they were born to do, and that is to teach. The government should do a lot more for um, supply teachers in terms of making sure that, one, they get the training they need to to make sure that they are fully qualified when they go into that classroom, and two, do a lot more in terms of funding to make sure that, one, the schools can actually provide teachers in the classroom if they haven't got teachers there already and making sure that people who are not qualified to teach are not there teaching a class when they should be a fully qualified teacher there. The government should free teachers from the constraints of testing so that we can not only show what our children can do but show our children what they can do. I believe that the government should respect our professionals. We should be trusted, we should be cherished and we should be the ones helping to make the policies. I believe the government should respect our professionals. We should be cherished, we should help to inform policy, and we should be the ones making it go forward. Uh, I'm Kyle, and I have come a long way to teach here, and I believe that the government should recognize the fact that teachers have a lot to offer to what their vision of society is. Uh, I want them to talk more to us so that they can understand the challenges that we're facing, so they can help us achieve the goals that we all hold for society. We want the best children doing the best work they can do to achieve the best life results they possibly can. We're all kind of the same thing, and I want to see that happening across the board. I believe the government should spend more time talking to us. Amanda Martin, Divisional Secretary for Portsmouth. The government should listen to the professionals and write policy based on evidence and research. The government should employ qualified teachers. The government should employ qualified teachers. The government should employ qualified teachers. The government really need to listen to teachers. The classic thing, the classic statement that's in my mind is when Gove called the educational establishment the blob. So that's the sort of uh, the, the view that they have towards education at the moment. Uh, Nicky Morgan says more 
shall we say, more kind words, but I don't really feel that the situation. They view uh, education as a commodity, they're heavily involved in privatising, they've destroyed the LEAs, and thereby, I think, debasing education and, and, and removing hope for the future for our students, and also undermining education in terms of the career for those people going in. And I really worry that we've now got, I believe, I, I hope I'm correct on this, that 40% of teachers give up in their first year. That's an awful waste of people's time, it's a waste of people's money, and what also is it saying to the students, the parents, the teachers who remain in the job? I think the government should listen to teachers, be informed by teachers, people who understand education, and not have their dogmatic views based on where, whatever their background is. How many of them actually gone in, got involved with education, talked to teachers, really talked to teachers, instead of putting up barriers? The incoming government should line up behind the manifesto of the NUT because it provides the blueprint for a better future for the education. The easy answer is that they should leave education alone, leave it to the teachers, leave it to the communities and the people that really care and know about education. The government should recognise that education is the future and without it this country will not be strong. The government should look really closely with a long term gaze at what these education cuts are going to do because in the short term maybe you get the right numbers um, on a PowerPoint now but in 10 in 20 years time then we've got an education system and a whole generation of the UK that don't have the right skills and don't have the right experience. The government should listen to the NUT. Look at the camera or look at the lens. There should be a collegiate atmosphere, not an atmosphere which is more like, uh, more like the fear regime that's taken ho over in colleges, where people and schools, academies in particular, where teachers feel afraid because there's somebody watching. I think if they took all schools back into local authority control it would make it easier because lots of the academies are getting away with, with murder, aren't they? And I think we need a proper, cohesive education system. That would be my first thing. Bring it back into local authority control and do something about the shortages of teachers, young teachers working for a year, two, three years and then fleeing the system because it's too much pressure. They're never going to stay for the 30 odd years like some of us did. Um, I want any government to, to trust the teachers to teach the children. We're trained, we're professionals, we have experience, we know what we're doing, we're the ones in the classroom every day. It's not for politicians who have got no experience, no qualifications in that field to be deciding what we should be doing. My, one of my personal bugbears, I teach in a special school and lots of my children don't produce work. There's not written work they're not readers, lots of them are non-verbal and the amount of pressure we're under to still provide evidence of what we're doing and what those children are able to do is ridiculous. The, the amount of photographs I'm supposed to take, print, put in a folder, stick somewhere, produce copies of is ridiculous. What, how do I know these children that are in my class can do these things because I say they can. I have clicked, ticked it on your assessment tool, that should be enough. I don't need to produce a video, produce a photograph and three copies in three different folders should Ofsted decide to come and try and find out what my children can do. I know what they can do, I can talk to their parents about what they can do and that, those are the only people who need to know. So I'm, I'm, sick, I'm sick of producing pointless evidence and that's, my, that's just one area of trust. Uh, trust me to not say, what I, you know, why would I lie? Let me do my job, I will tell you how well it's going and you can believe me. Um, I want to say that, okay, any, any government um, should trust teachers to get on with the job, 
to know what they're doing, to be doing it and to be doing it well and reporting to the people who matter, which are people like parents, for example. Um, in my job as a special school teacher, lots of the children that I work with don't produce work in terms of written work, in terms of exam papers and I still need to assess their progress and report back, I get that. I, I, if, if my children are able to do um, a, an amount of eye gaze which they couldn't do before or able to do something else practical which they couldn't do before or articulate some speech which they couldn't do before, I am still under pressure to provide some kind of evidence and it may be many times a photograph, it may be a piece of video. Well, some, sometimes that is within the context of the lesson and that's fine. It's great to show some parents some video footage of their children doing something at school. But other times when I am going through uh, the assessment tool which we use on the computer and I'm still ticking my boxes about what children can do and what, they, what, what maybe they can't do, I'm still under pressure to provide a piece of evidence for each one of those. So if I say a child can do this particular thing, have I got a photograph of them doing it? If I say they can do X, have I got a photograph of them doing it? Have I got a witness statement that they can do it? I say they can do it. I have seen them, I am their teacher, I've been working with them. They may have done it once, they may have done it ten times in that day. I might not have a photograph of any of that. And can you photograph eye gaze? Can you photograph a child articulating a word? Of course you can't, it's a nonsense. Trust me. I am rejecting baseline testing because they're not fun and they're useless and they're actually quite cruel. The government should start trusting teachers um, because we are the professionals on education and um, stop trusting businesses to try and run schools and um, should stop putting unqualified teachers in schools because it's undermining real education. <laughs> I'm a primary school teacher, I also teach special needs children. Um, at the minute I'm having to do lots of assessment, um, such as if a, ch a, sh a child can tie their shoelaces, then I have to create evidence for that. Um, it's really boring, um, it's not fun for the children, it's wasting teachers' time. We you know we should be doing lots of visual kinesthetic things with our autistic children and just with um, primary children. I remember when I was in primary school many years ago, um, it was really fun and I think um, we've shifted the focus on and made education a business and um, it's just not working. Oh, well done. It's very good though. Yes! <laughs> hey, well done. That's a whole I'm wondering whether. Well oh, done, beautiful. Ah, well done. Right. I think that an incoming government needs to look very seriously at the policies contained in the NUT's manifesto. Policies like the right of every child to be taught by a qualified teacher. Policies like taking direct action to reduce child poverty. That is the biggest break on our children's achievement within the education system, is poverty. And yet under the current government, poverty has grown and grown and grown. We now have families using food banks simply to feed their children. That's unacceptable in 21st century Britain. First of all, they must not reduce the funding available for all the uh, facilities or all the provisions that an education department provides. Secondly, I mean, I would suggest they should think of increasing fundings here and there, if possible, and also some moral support. And also they should try the, the, to uh, reduce the workload, that is the main issue at the moment, which of course leads to the indiscipline in classes as well, because the students, when you have 30, 35 students in a class, so it's difficult to manage. So the uh, number of uh, students in a class should be reduced in the workload, and some unnecessary paperwork, I think, should be reduced. Uh, I'd like to see us look into 
uh, removing the political side of the education board and having a change of government every so many years means that they wish to bring their ideas into the curriculum. So every so many years we change curriculum. Uh, I've done seven or eight years now of teaching and I'm on my third or fourth curriculum in the early years. Well how am I supposed to get any better and make improvements professionally if every so many years it changes? Uh, we've just introduced the early years uh, profile at the end of the year. Well they say that it takes four years to get good data to compare previous year on year. Well by the time we get to our fourth year we'll have scrapped that and we'll be doing the baseline. So we've not even got any very good comparative data to look at. So I think that education as a department should be taken away from the political party that's in lead at the moment, whether that's a basis like in Finland where each political party works together, whoever has a seat in the Houses of Parliament would therefore work on an education board, therefore you'd get the different inputs from the different political parties, but it would come out as a broad curriculum rather than particularly linked to the political statements for that, that government or in uh, other countries where actually they, they take on a year by year role so every 12 years your curriculum is changed but actually what they do is okay we're going to look at what's wrong with the current curriculum okay let's change that here's we're going to trial this curriculum now we're going to try a new curriculum and you know what's coming you know you've seen the preliminaries you've seen you've answered questions about what could be improved and you know that the change is coming and it's strategically done every so many years rather than quick, we're a new government, we don't like what they did, let's change it again. And therefore when it changes government, we change again. And I think that would be a real good thing to look at, whoever gets into power in our next election. Uh, I mean, Michael Grove has many issues and obviously he's, he's now gone, um, but he was obviously bringing the conservative style political agendas into the education system and saying, well, this is how I was learned, this is how I learned how to, with history, this is how you should learn. Well, then Labour obviously disagree with that and they had a style of learn by the most modern history first, so the children have an understanding. And if we switch back to Labour, will we go back to the old curriculum and we come back to the new one? I'm not saying that certain things that Michael Gove or any other Conservative or any other political person learnt at school is a bad thing. There may be an excellent way we taught ten years ago that we're not doing now that we should go back to. But I think if you have a political influence from everyone, then you're going to have a much more balanced curriculum and you're going to have it that reflects a society that is quite different. There are some people that have very conservative views, there are some people who have very left-wing views. And having a balanced education board or body or whatever it will end up being would mean that your curriculum would represent that rather than the person who is in power at that particular time. In terms of education and assessment in general, it should be a led from the child, a bottom-up approach. We've seen that there's the mental health levels of children today, the amount of self-harming in children as young as primary school ages is a result of assessments. We looked at a few years of boycotting SATs and we saw that actually giving the professional integrity back to teachers that they could make a judgment on where that child was was actually greater not using a test than it was using the test. They should look at the effects the tests are having, not only on the children but on, on teachers' workload. Testing does not tell us about that child. It doesn't inform of what we're doing. It doesn't tell us about it. It should be a bottom-down approach. P teachers should be let to assess children as and when they need to, not every six weeks. I think the incoming government should be fair to each child, allow them to progress as they start their education journey. I also believe that they should be supporting children with special needs in particular, rather than making it difficult for them. They should allow more funding into special schools so that all schools are appropriately funded to be able to support each individual child to be able to achieve the very best they can. A new government should ensure that we are following the Early Years Foundation stage profile which already makes sure that children are treated as unique children, as individuals and that they are nurtured and cared for in the way that they should be cared for as four-year-olds and not tested and put on a conveyor belt of further tests and told that they are failures at four years old. Um, an incoming government should look at progressive education, um, particularly in Finland. Finland has the best outcomes in, in the, in the um, world for, for um, its um, young people and children 
and they, they do better in maths and literacy as well as in the other subjects. And in Finland, there is no testing until children are 14. The only, test, the only assessment in Finland is teacher assessment. The teachers are professionals and are regarded as professionals. Um, we have teacher assessment in Britain for three-year-olds and four-year-olds. Three-year-olds, I'm a nursery teacher, I work with three and four-year-olds. Um, Teacher assessment is excellent. We know where the children are at. We don't need um, synthetic baseline testing. I think the best thing that an incoming government can do in terms of education is to sit down and listen to the people at the chalk face, the people who work with children, the people who know a lot about education because they've studied, they've researched, they've spent time where the education happens. I would like an incoming government to stop using education as a political football and see children for children and not for numbers that need to be shown to progress continuously throughout education. <laughs> okay? Any incoming, any incoming government, one of their first priorities should be, imme to, be to immediately scrap this ridiculous plan. I think an incoming government should listen to uh, unions like the NUT, teaching groups, I think they should really listen. I don't think they've actively listened for a long time. Um, I think they should listen to the professionals who've got plenty of positive ideas. I, and I think it's not about saying no to things, it's about listening to what positive ideas that teachers have got, qualified teachers have got. The government should put children at the heart of policy, not profit. I'm a new rep. I became a rep in January and this conference has really opened my eyes to the insidious nature of business that is trying to make its way into education, whereby education is now becoming a means of profit rather than to the improvement of children in education, through education. And it's something that I'm beginning to develop a bit of a passion for. <laughs> So it really is something I think we need to lobby the government to remind them that education is about the children rather than companies wanting to make profit from the children's education. The government should stop meddling and let teachers teach. Fantastic. One more time. The government should stop meddling and let teachers teach. <laughs> to teachers about teachers. There's too many people making decisions that don't teach. They haven't been in secondary schools. They go to the odd, odd visit to a school and it's all for publicity. We want you to spend time with schools, spend quality time in a range of schools with us. Speak to us about the decisions that you're making that affect us and our children. The new government needs to put put money into training teachers, supporting teachers, cutting down the workload, making sure that they're not exhausted, that they're not giving up, that they stay in the profession. So many teachers leave within the first year. I'm the Young Teacher Officer for Oldham, I'm on the Young Teachers Advisory Committee for the North West, and people contact me saying they're tired, they're exhausted, they're upset, they can't cope. The government needs to take note of that and do something about it to make sure that they don't feel like that, they don't want to leave, they don't want to quit. Last year I had two NQTs leaving at the end of the first year, they handed the notice in at Easter, at Christmas they decided they didn't want to do it. Too much of that is happening and it's happening too often. So the government needs to do something about it because these are people that have put a lot of effort into training for this job. They're putting a huge amount of work on their PGCE, they've put a huge amount of work in their first year, they are brilliant teachers. They're, people are saying they're quitting because they can't cope, they're rubbish teachers but they are not got a huge amount of work in and they are really doing what the best they can and it's a shame that they've had to leave and find something else to do. The government should trust teachers and their professionalism. We care passionately about children and their future and after all the children's future is our country's future so what could be more important than that? Well, I think the government should really trust teachers but they also need to give teachers the time to ensure that we can prepare lessons which are exciting, which inspire, and which allow children to question. And I think, at the moment, too much of the curriculum is top-down. It's about knowledge, it's about regurgitation of facts, when true education is about giving children the ability to question, to analyse, to look at different sources of information, and come to a reasoned and balanced judgement and conclusion. 
um, and I think they should just allow teachers to make the world of education and schools more fun and exciting for children. An incoming government should make sure that teachers aren't just completely wiped out because of bureaucracy in terms of workload, that students get fair chances, that we're not told actually this is what you can teach. Leave it up to the professionals. Don't make students just keep on taking tests just because of data and more data. We want our young students to achieve and the government needs to talk to teachers in unions because we are the people at the ground level who know what it is that needs to be done. Um, they should definitely reassess the performance related pay. Um, it should be more of a conversation and a discussion. It shouldn't just be uh, based against points and data. Um, children have names, they have individual personalities. They're not just um, you know, marketing and sales tools at the end of the day. It's, it's not a business, you know, it's, it's people's lives, it's young people's lives. Most people believe in education of some sort, but it seems like the government doesn't want to push forward it properly. They don't want to invest properly. They don't want to ask the relevant people what is important. They seem to go off at a tangent and a new education minister comes in, he goes, or she goes off at a tangent, and we, you know, we're not moving forward as a nation. They should uh, sit down with people like from the NUT and the other unions and actually talk through what it entails to educate our children. Sort of investment we need. They should not say like, right, we're going to cap investment, we're going to think, right, we want people here to have a high standard of education, to be able to do the wide range of jobs in the country, and also to develop the nation for the future. A lot of the jobs, a lot of the things that we would want to do ain't invented now. If you go back years ago, you didn't have web developers, you didn't have people who did the computing, because these things didn't exist. But you need the people who can develop that at all the different levels. So investment, it's not a short-term enclosed thing, it's, it's a wide thing. It might need a lot of investment. Schools, new buildings, teachers, teaching assistants, a whole thing. It's not cutting it down, it's expanding it. If it costs more money than plan, so be it. You'll see the results in years to come. And that's the way forward. That's what we want. <laughs>
and teachers won't be the first wave. The first wave is going to be teaching assistants. That is taking away that adult support in the classroom for the most vulnerable students that we have in our society. It doesn't matter if it's Labour or Conservative, it's 12% cut in funding. Once the teaching assistants have gone, then the teachers go. When the teachers go, you're talking about unqualified people teaching our students in that classroom. You're also talking about a system that says if you don't achieve that grade, you have to repeat it. You have to repeat the English and Maths GCSE until you are 18. You have to go to college because you didn't get a C. You have to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. We don't care about what your SEN needs are. We are going to make you repeat those exams. What we want is a qualified teacher in every single classroom, a qualified adult to assist that teacher in every single classroom. We want a whole range of specialist teachers who are employed by the local authority, which is what we used to have in education, we don't have it now, and we want an end to league tables because that is what is killing our education system now. Schools are paying up to £200 a day for the services of a supply teacher. But that money doesn't go to the supply teacher, it goes to the agency. About half of it goes to the agency. Supply teachers are being paid less than £100 a day. That means 50% of a school's supply budget is going to a private agency. That money was ring-fenced for education, not to go to private companies. What are you going to do about it? The government should listen to what the NUT has been saying and use the system that's already in place in Northern Ireland of a central register of supply teachers, which the schools can access through eTeach software without having to pay any intermediary fees to agencies. That means the supply teachers are being paid the full rate and they're members of the uh, teacher supply, uh, pension scheme and they get a fair deal.